Hey, if you've heard of Scrivener, but its complexity kind of intimidates you, then you're in luck. I'm going to be breaking down Scrivener into little digestible bites so you can maximize the software to write amazing stories. Hey friends, let's talk about Scrivener, specifically the comments and footnotes section. And by talk, I mean I talk and you leave comments down below. Ask me questions or tell me about your favorite Scrivener features. Now, I've got to be honest, I was for a long time of the opinion, like comments and footnotes, what am I, some kind of nerd? I don't need to use these. And looking back at myself, I'm like, oh, Sophia, you idiot. <laughs> you could have made life so much easier on yourself because I write historical fiction set in non-English speaking countries. And I like to add in little words here and there of other languages. And if I had known about the comments and footnotes, especially the footnotes feature, that would have made my life so much easier when I was compiling my glossary. <laughs> um, it would have just done it for me. So this topic actually is pretty dense. So I'm just going to get straight into it so we can not have a super long video. Alrighty, so first of all, what the heck are comments and footnotes? If you've ever read a textbook in your life, you've seen footnotes, you know, there will be something in the text, or even if you've read a Wikipedia article, you know, you'll read something in the text and then there will be a little number, citation, whatever next to it, and down at the very bottom of the page, there's a whole list of the resources or citations, and this is the footnotes. The footnotes are also called endnotes. Footnotes appear at the end of the page that they're on. Endnotes appear at the end of the chapter and or entire manuscript. Comments are, if you've ever edited anything in Google Docs or Microsoft Word, you know what a comment is. You can click somewhere, highlight something, hit comment, and then say, hey, you know, this sentence is worded kind of awkwardly. I think that you should reword it or, you know, something like that. But in Scrivener, if you're not going to be, you know, sharing documents with somebody else to edit, you can use those comments and footnotes just for your own use. One of my favorite things to do with comments is use them like bookmarks. So in a big long manuscript, you can open up your inspector in the comments and just click around and it will jump you to wherever that comment is. So it's kind of a neat way to kind of bounce around your manuscript, but I will talk about that in a second. Anyway, okay, so how do we add comments? Well, the first thing you do, you open up your inspector pane, and if you don't have it, it's just this, if you don't see it, it's just this blue circle up here with the eye in it, opens it up, boom, your inspector pane, and it's all the way over here is where your comments are. As we are in here, you know, usually in Scrivener, you have your plus and your minus sign, and they're easy to click, but click here and like, ugh, nothing's happening. Why isn't anything happening? because you have to select somewhere in the text in order to add comments and footnotes. So let's highlight this as a heading up here. And now you can see that I can add stuff. So let's add a comment. So it has highlighted it over here and then it has also added it in right here and adds who added it, the date and the time. And I can click in here and I can say, this is a great heading. Woohoo, okay. You can change the color of this comment box. I'm gonna say all of my red comments are really bad boo-boos that I need to get rid of. And the orange ones are like, eh, whatever. Blue is stuff that I love and I'm patting myself on the back. Green is historically accurate, you know, just stuff like that. You can assign it to whatever you want and color code them. So let's say, I wanna change this to purple, there we go. It changes here and it changes down here. If for some reason you do not wanna use the inspector to add new comments, just either highlight like I did up here or just stick your whatever, your thing, <laughs> your cursor and then hit insert comment. So if you don't highlight something, you just stick your cursor in, the um, Scrivener will just pick the closest word and highlight that one. And this is, which is what it did here. Inline annotations, okay. I'm gonna click right here, insert, and hit inline annotation. And I didn't highlight anything, I just clicked. So when I click inline annotation, I start typing the good changes. It just types in like that. And you see it does not add anything over here. So the inline changes, or the inline annotations, We'll add things into this text in here, but it won't add anything into the inspector. So you need to be cognizant of where you're putting them 
and kind of why. There is a function in your compile, which we'll talk about in just a second, where you can include or not include these. So if you add in a bunch and you delete most of them out, you forget one, that's okay. In your compile, you can just say, don't add in my annotations and it won't, so you will never see them, so it's okay. If I highlight it, insert inline annotation, it'll just highlight what's already typed or what is already existing. If you don't highlight, then you type in whatever the annotation is. Bada bing, bada boom. So if I'm up here and I want to go to this very last comment, click over here and it will put me down there. This is how you kind of use them as bookmarks. And then I can pop up here. So I can just bounce around my manuscript using these comments over here. And as you saw, you can make the comments say whatever you want. Just double click in here. Now I know, have an idea of what each one is and I can just boop, boop, boop and bounce around. Something that I talk about in my fast drafting video is when you get to a spot where you don't really know what to do or you realize, oh man, I'm in chapter 10. I really needed to go back to chapter three and change this thing about a character. Don't go back to chapter three. Don't do it, it's a trap. Just leave a note for yourself. And I have a separate document up where I leave a note that says, okay, go back to chapter three, change this. However, you can use the comments for this purpose as well. I know some people do this with brackets. So you reach a point in your manuscript where your character walks into a new town and you need to describe the town. You need to give the audience or you need to give your readers some kind of grounding, but you're just not feeling creative that day. You're not feeling like a town description vibe. And a lot of people will do open bracket, close bracket, and in the middle say like, describe this town. And you can use this feature for that as well. So you leave yourself a little comment, not in line, but a, a comment over on the side here that says, describe this town. And then later when you're like, oh, what do I need to do? So you come into the comments and footnotes, and this is for this folder right here. If I click into a different folder, they're not there anymore. It's per folder, but if you click on the whole manuscript, then all of the, everything will pop up. As we're coming through for our revision, you can just use that and go, oh, okay, this is what I needed to do. Oh, okay, I needed to describe this town. So you can bounce over there and go describe, describe, just people using brackets are, or the curly brackets or the straight brackets or whatever is a good search feature because you can control F or command F or whatever. And because you don't use the curly brackets in normal typing, generally speaking. So when you do control F for that, then you can find those, do this thing, those comments to yourself very easily. But that's also what you can do over here. Just a thought if you want to. So now we are going to talk about footnotes. Footnotes have the inspector and the inline just like comments. So we'll say the next scene and you can do it right here. The CF is adding a footnote. So add that, the footnote pops up and the footnote's not colored and it also doesn't have your name and stuff. So let's do this footnote is the next scene. And I'm gonna say the next scene is very cool and happens in the dark. All right, if you wanna add an inline footnote, just like above, so we'll click here insert inline footnote or for an inline footnote you can highlight insert inline footnote and it just highlights the thing you select okay we see over here we have our comments we have our footnotes so what's the difference between comments and footnotes you can still jump around and use your footnotes as bookmarks kind of the footnotes do not get that color coding whereas the comments do so we can change the comments so they're they're pretty similar in that regard now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned that I really wish that I had paid attention in the Scrivener tutorials because I could have been using the footnotes feature, especially this whole time, to make my glossary way easier to make. So I'm going to talk about that right now. Scenario. I have finished my manuscript and I was responsible throughout and I was keeping footnotes on any weird words I used. I would highlight it and I would make a footnote and over in the footnote over here, I would define it. So um, babushka, this means grandma in Russian. So I would highlight babushka and over here would say Russian for quote, grandmother quote, and so on. Um, my glossary is like 100 pages long. It's terrible. <laughs> I'm irresponsible with foreign words. Anyway, up here to file. So I'm gonna select everything just cause I'm pedantic like that. So file and compile. So my compile pops up and make sure everything's selected over here. Okay, great. And I'm gonna do a Microsoft Word document because that's just how I compile. You can pick whatever you want, but I'm going with Microsoft Word. All right. And then you come over here to this little cogwheel and you have all these really cool options. So 
It's default to remove your comments and annotations. Like I said earlier, um, if you do some inline comments or inline annotations and then you can't find them, that's okay. Just make sure these are checked and it's not gonna show up in your compiled menu script. But you can see that the remove footnotes is default not clicked because footnotes are amazing. Footnotes, when you compile them, will appear at the end of every page. End notes appear at the either the very end of the manuscript or you can insert an end note marker and put those end notes in where you want. So let's pop out of here real quick. And down here at the very end, I'm going to create a new folder or a new text titled glossary. In this glossary, I'm going to click right up here at the top and I'm going to go up here to insert and end note marker and it will add in this code. Then let's go back to compile. Do, do, do. I've got my cogwheel up and export inspector footnotes as endnotes. And I wanna check that one. So I'm actually going to leave in my comments just cause I wanna show you what it looks like when you leave them in and then also what it looks like when you compile and have your footnotes. Okay, so I'm gonna hit compile. It took like two seconds because it's a tiny file. <laughs> so this is how Scrivener compiles. I have it preset to have my actual information here and I deleted it. The manuscript is titled Quick Start. I wrote it. It's about 200 words. Good to know. All right. So let's scroll down. So as you can see, I left in those comments. And so in Word, this is kind of how the comments add in and it keeps them all in here. So the things that I made comments on within Scrivener have been exported into Word as well, which is kind of neat. Here's the footnotes for this page. So kind of comparing down here, right? So with this one, I had highlighted it and just done it as regular footnote. So it made it one and then up here we do one and then it says two and then I added this as an inline footnote. So I can, and then that showed up here two, two. And those can be useful for whatever function you want. Um, if you've ever read the book Eaters of the Dead by Michael Crichton, um, which is a phenomenal book and I 1000% recommend it. It's kind of gross. The movie is stupid, um, but the book is great. And he uses a lot of footnotes throughout to kind of make it feel more like an actual text, like a textbook text. And it has all these footnotes about real historical information, and it's just really cool. So if that's the style you're gonna write in, this is a cool way to do it. So now let's keep on scrolling down. And I didn't put in any more footnotes anywhere, boop, boop, boop. But I did do that end notes thing. So let's go down to end notes are, okay. End notes, so I, if you remember that I selected export footnotes as end notes, so these have popped way down here. The ones that were up above that are not included down here were the inline and these are the inspector and I I only selected to export the inspector footnotes as end notes not the inline. If I had included the inline that would have been down here as well but I didn't. I only did because I'm kind of showing how I wish I would have done my glossary. Highlight babushka it means grandma and down it is at the bottom. Now, it didn't add it up here to where I included endnotes. The endnotes right here, in Word, it's kind of glitchy. It doesn't like to actually insert your endnotes here, but they're all down here anyway. So you just copy and paste. And it'll do this weird thing with the formatting, but honestly, it's so much better than trying to type a pearl glossary on its own. Also for middle grade writers, if you're writing middle grade, this can be really handy for classroom guides. If you have words that you want to kind of point out as being important to students reading. Again, this is kind of like creating a glossary, creating a classroom guide is very labor intensive and this would make it way easier. So let's say we have a word like verification in your manuscript and you know it's middle grade manuscript and middle grade students are going to be like what does that mean so in your classroom guide to make that you just highlight it insert footnote and then you can say verification is the act of that's not the def actual definition but like i 
I'm not able to, anyway, when you compile footnotes, if you just leave it in at the end of whatever page it is, it makes it way easier for you to find all the words that you thought were important on that page. And then you can arrange those into a classroom guide and even include page numbers because you did it per page. Um, or you can compile them all at the end if that's what you prefer. So yeah, this is a really long video. <laughs> I'm going to edit a lot out, but it was still really long because this is a really cool feature, especially if you're writing stuff that needs a glossary, stuff that has research attached to it, or if you want to create some kind of classroom guide at the end. So thank you so much for tuning into this video and then also sticking around for the whole thing. I hope you learned something new and cool about comments and footnotes. If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Wash your hands. Black Lives Matter. Have a nice day.